good evening ladies and gentlemen and all the wonderful viewers welcome to the sunday special episode of grooming daughters today we have minakshi sharma with us she was born in lagaland and brought up in delhi in anurachal pradesh she is a hostelier from mysore international school and she's done her college from shriram college of commerce she worked in price waterhouse cooper that is pwc and realized that auditing career was not for her she was always interested in fmb industry industry which took her to switzerland to pursue pj diploma in hospitality hospitality management her interest in beverage industry peaked as her family was into liquor manufacturing she started working for her father in 2015 they had a manufacturing unit with tie ups with diageo at the time with some of her own local popular brands in arunachal pradesh since 2015 to 220 to 2020 she focused on increasing the utilization of existing capacity they had a successful tie up with abd to produce officers choice blue whisky she also worked on branding and packaging of new brands like roman vodka and rubiru wines and their volumes have now grown up from 70 per by 70% in last 5 years currently she is pursuing her gfmb program from spjn welcome minakshi it's nice to have you on our platform today thank you so much sabina ma'am i am really really humbled to have this opportunity Thank you. We so also much. have Professor Hitain Muchala here with us today. He is a very passionate teacher and teacher strategy strategy with GFMB students under SPGN School of Global Management. Welcome, Hitain sir. Over to you. Thank you so much, Sabina. And uh, first of all, welcome all the viewers once again to this episode, which is hosted by Asian Institute of Family Management Business. it's very very interesting again today we have a, a lovely young lady and her name is minakshi sharma and what is so unique about her is i think what you learnt and you heard from her uh, profile uh, which sabina said so having born in nagaland brought up in arunachal pradesh and then later in delhi having educated across india switzerland and now back to india under a rgfmb program this this girl this young lady is actually entering have has entered her father's liquor business so a woman entering a liquors business so quite a quite a quite unique things about her and i think this is what we are going to share welcome minakshi thank you so much for being with us thank you so much hitain sir sir the pleasure is all mine great minakshi so you should tell us uh, born in nagaland Uh, moved to arunachal pradesh and brought up there for few uh, initial years of your life uh, what has it been like uh, being brought up in arunachal pradesh because arunachal pradesh has been you know right at the uh, at the extreme east of our country and uh, not much is known about arunachal pradesh for a normal person uh, yeah. so it will be great to hear from you what is it like in arunachal pradesh first of all i would like to say that arunachal is the switzerland of india so it is absolutely stunning and beautiful so people must explore that state but uh, other than that so i was born in nagaland and uh, you know my father had set up his uh, wholesale uh, liquor wholesale there but unfortunately 3 years after you know he set up everything and everything was going well there was prohibition in the state so we had to make a decision of closing down our businesses and moving to a place where we saw an opportunity so um my father decided to move to arunachal and that's where he started very small uh you know as he opened a retail shop then he went on to build you know wholesale then bonded warehouses and then today we have you know manufacturing units but arunachal as a state so i think um uh, you know it's a lovely place and relationships are what make arunachal you know and the people come together only because of the personal relationships that we build with them and not only in our businesses but in general a uh, a generation uh, works for you and then the next generation works for you and the next generation works with you till they can 
you know, build something of their own. And that is what Arunachal is. And uh, especially for women, I think it's one of the very, uh, you know, safe states. I think in Arunachal, you will never hear, uh, you know, there are rape cases or, you know, molestation or eve teasing because that is something that does not happen there. It's just not allowed. Uh, they're very protective of their women. But at the same time, you know, uh, they love their women one too many. So poly polygamy is something that is, uh, you know, allowed in that state. Uh, so yes, so I think, um, you know, Arunachal has really uh, brought in a lot, a very progressive, in fact, you know, state of mind um, a tribal state has. So I think that's the best part about Arunachal. So you said it's a tribal state and naturally, you know, a tribal state will have the tribal mindset, uh, polygamy yeah. being a legally uh, accepted uh, practice of living life, mm -hmm. one, one man having many wives. Uh, yes. And I'm sure that, you know, naturally the inclination of an expectation from a woman in Arunachal Pradesh would be to look after her family, uh, take care of the house. Uh, in that sense, how does progress of a woman depend in this state? I think, yes, initially, uh, you know, the men were supposed to be uh, the bread earners, you know, and uh, they were supposed to take care of uh, the woman. And the woman was supposed to, you know, have kids and take care of the house. They, uh, By the way, like women uh, from Northeast, if you meet many women from Northeast, you'll also get to know that they're excellent homemakers. You know, they're excellent homemakers and they bring about a very uh, beautiful balance in their life. So, but slowly, I think in the last uh, five to seven years, I have happened to meet women who are, you know, um, um, who are growing. And this, I think, also has come from one thing that I think alcohol consumption in general in Northeast is quite high. And um, because it's high, you know, Pahadi area hai, to wahan pe consumption zada rehta hai. So, per se, I think the lifespan of, you know, men, I think, is lesser than women. And at that point, you know, um, when, they, when women don't have someone to take care of them, that's when they actually step out. And that's, I think that's one of the things that I've seen women who've lost their husbands you know, to support them, how they have just come out of nowhere and taken care of everything. So that is one part of Northeast that has, you know, um, progressed. And slowly, I think, so uh, the land there is also very fertile. So um, now they're thinking more in the lines of, let's not limit it to Arunachal. What can we do more? You know, what can we do more? So I think a lot of young women are still to, you know, explore this opportunity. I think older women are now have started doing it. But I think younger women need to get more ambitious and do more um, on that front. Younger women have to get more ambitious. And I think who better than one of you who is yeah. leading this cause, right? <laughs> so we are coming to you. But before that, you, you mentioned that, you know, Northeastern women are excellent uh, housewives. Uh, on that note, would you like to speak something yeah. about your mother? Oh, yes. So my mom um, is the pillar of our strength. You know, like she, we all uh, function because of her. And uh, it's only recently that my mom has left everything. But so, so I think before um, you respond, let me let me tell the viewers that uh, Meenakshi's mother yeah. is from Nagaland. Yes. Yeah. My ahead, mother Meenakshi. is uh, Naga. And my dad is Punjabi, so it's a, I'm a combination of the two. But my mother used to be working before. You know, she was the one who would be like the strict one in operations. You know, ki ye bottle kyun nahi achhe se fill hua, ye kyun nahi aise kar rahe ho. And my mother looks after the construction of all of our, you know, upcoming units or the existing units. So she has a very very big role. Uh, in our lives, uh, in our businesses, I think she has played a very big role. And without her support, I don't think my dad would have been able to do what he has done today. 
so then let me ask you about your dad how protective is your dad about you i think he he's i, I don't think he's very protective to be honest <laughs> he lets me make my uh, you know he lets he he leaves me as a free bird he always thinks i'm too sensible and i'll take the you know i'll make the right decision so as per, like personal decisions usually are mine but i am a person who does not like making mistakes um so i always happen to confirm something big that i'm going to do with my dad so other than that i don't think my dad is quite possessive or protective okay so let let me let me rephrase this question meenakshi right so you actually uh, did your schooling from masuri yeah. you did your uh, or college uh, from uh, from delhi new delhi and then you went to switzerland and now you are doing your gfmb program from bombay right yeah. so was it a challenge for your dad to take these decisions itni choti meri beti hai kaise main itna dur lambe bhej dun usko was that ever a thought in his mind and how did he how did he discuss this at bilkul sir i think uh, my father he never wanted uh, his children to you know be in the north east and just become like you know somebody who does not develop their own individuality and personality and that is why my father had to send all of us away to hostels so that we got better education at that time uh, you know i think there were not many good universities or school in arunachal um in fact i got to know the school that i studied in arunachal recently has actually shut down you know and uh, and that's why my dad made this very difficult decision it was hard for my mom to send all of her three kids away but i think uh, it was the right decision that they took because we not only got exposed uh, in terms of independence but so if we were not okay we had to take care of ourselves and we had to get up on our own you know from a failure from a rejection from a bully from everything uh, it was <clears throat> all us that we you know we had to depend only on ourselves at that time and it was it was very hard because my father and mother only got about 3 minutes call every month with me and after the 3 minutes the call was cut so those 6 years of my life you know i i tried to do the best that i could and i learned a lot a lot Uh, and i think that experience has made me what i am today so then coming back to your post graduation once you graduated your profile says that yeah. uh, you took up a job with uh, price waterhouse cooper pwc yeah and uh, uh why did what made you think that you know job is not good for me i need to join my family business so what was that realization all about so so i went to shriram college of commerce and i did bcom honors you know i was always surrounded by very intelligent people um we had the top notch companies you know com- coming to our campus to recruit in fact i was also in the placement cell helping students to get recruited by these top notch companies um i decided that you know because i am not sure what i want to do let me just you know take up a job at a decent company and given my profile it was easy to find it you know as a fresher and as a pass out from srcc i have been also rejected on the basis of your over qualified uh, which at that time was you know uh, something a young girl i don't think should have heard but it did make me realize that i am not ordinary but uh, i didn't take up that job then i took up a job in um, uh, pwc now pwc so was uh, an excellent learning ground for me because i learned the most important thing that i learned in uh, pwc i have to tell you about this is i was in the part where i do internal assessment internal auditing of business processes so my work was to find out the risks in the existing business plan and to suggest controls on that risks right that was what my job profile had to do with so you see it had conditioned my mind to think that way now why i left it 
was because I don't think I was a person who could have worked under somebody, you know, having a boss and um, just like, you know, if you don't reach at nine, it's like in nine in the morning, it's like, Tum kaami nahi karte ho. you know, if you reach at nine or five, then only it's the real thing. But yes, so um, that was something that, uh, you know, that I just, I just couldn't work under somebody. I like, I had too much of an independent thinking process on how things should be. Now, after that, I, uh, I was always interested in uh, FNB. Okay. So, I had started with by F and B. You you mean food and beverage? Food and beverage. So I would tell my dad. Now you have to see in this process of me being in college and working through PwC, my father has spent that four years convincing me that I need to join the family business. And I was this woman who would say, "No, I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to do this." Okay, kya karte ja ke, you know. Aapko bas office mein hota hai. You know, that's what I used to, I used to think I, I'm not going to do because I never thought that I'll get that respect, you know, there. Uh, so then uh, FNB actually took me to, because I wanted to do that, I went to Switzerland, uh, to La Roche. Now, it gave me a perspective, although I did not use much of that in my life. I will tell you that I don't know how much uh, education in terms of classroom education helps but everything around like your peers your experiences is what really teaches you but I, I I had a mixology and a bar class that I used to have and I would relate it back to what my dad used to speak about you know the alcohol industry and there was something in common that I was finding my passion just amongst this. And you also have to understand that during the time that I was in Arunachal, I, uh, sorry, I was in uh, Switzerland, I was a teetotaler. <laughs> so I would attend all this. I'm a certified mixologist, but I would not drink. I not drink, but I not and uh, after I came back, sir, I worked in the revenue department in Ritz Carlton, okay, to get my degree. Now, the reason I worked in the revenue department was because operations in FNB was not my thing. Uh, I wanted to understand the business, and uh, I understood the back end of it. And that then I realized that Mere ghar pe to sab kuch ready, ready para. you know, everything is ready, like a hot seat. I just have to enter it and apply it. And Wonderful. that's, yeah, it, it, everything was ready. And my father was requesting me so much. I said, Ek bar karke dekh lete, kya hai. You know, like the business is ours only. It's, I have nothing to lose is what I thought. But I had a very serious conversation with my dad. Uh, before I joined the business was you need to pay me I cannot work for free <laughs> that was my only condition that I had with him um, because I think it's it's important to establish uh, one a personal relationship and a professional one also where I also feel like I'm growing right so um, I think that was one condition I had with my dad and uh, yeah then I started off with uh, it, it was a very small thing, but my dad actually gave me the responsibility of family investments. So we had. Um, so I think, uh, Minakshi, let me let me just yeah. uh, summarize what you said, and you made some couple of very very interesting points uh, during yeah. this uh, past uh, response. One was that you said that you know in PwC you understood what is risk management, how to manage risk, yeah. how to strengthen the balance sheet, how to strengthen the finances of the company. And then later at Ritz Carlton, you understood that, you know, what are processes, how can things yeah. be process driven? And you mentioned that both these things made you made a realization in your mind. My business is already ready. Kiya hua hai father ne. Bana banaya hua hai. Jo main bahar seekhne ko jati hu, is something that I can learn within my own business. Yeah. Right. And at, on one side, your father was already insisting you to join business. And on the other side, you had this realization that he's right. I can actually learn much more in my family business than with an outside outside job. Yeah. Right. And that is what made you join this business. But 
what i'm extremely uh, surprised and let me say pleasantly surprised is it's very rare liquor okay liquor is as as per the classification of government of india central government of india not by hiten muchala right is it's a sin product right and uh, it is classified under gst also as a sin product mm. and a woman a young woman a father insisting his own daughter to join a liquor industry a sin industry a sin product is something quite uh, i would say progressive right so yes. how how it been the thought process uh, with you and your father around this uh, or at your home it's very interesting that you ask me this question because i have had my my it's emotional side of me but i've had my struggle where it has grown from while i was growing up i was embarrassed to tell people what my dad does you know and because they look down on me you know they look down on me and i was so it i would rue myself in that you know i i did not like to say what my dad does it was only so after after my college that i found that confidence you know because what had happened was um people around although we all know 25 is the drinking age but um people around had started drinking it was acceptable as a social norm at some point it became very cool as a social norm and that is when people actually uh, accepted me and and now today like i'll to be honest a lot of women don't come speak to me you know and it is the men who want to come and speak to me and they already think you know i am like their buddy because of the industry that i am in um yeah and it is my life experience and when someone says you know manakshi you are so social i and i just you know sometimes think to myself that it it's because of what i do is it's easier for somebody to speak to me so i i grew from so feeling embarrassed about it to feeling very very proud about it you know and then to feeling like i'm like this odd one out and i like to challenge the existing you know like stigma yeah and the stigma around it so and that built up a lot of confidence in me and <clears throat> with my dad i think he saw that in me you know he saw that the way i carried myself um that i was not uh, you know i was not the party girl because you know i am in this line of work i you know i have i'm also traditional in a lot of ways and so is my father you know i don't think i can still sit down with my father and have a drink with without him feeling uncomfortable about it you know uh but he can do that with my dad uh, with my brother so uh in terms of work though he knows like who holds what horses so he doesn't say much about it but i think uh, minakshi you said it very well and uh, straight from your heart and honestly that you know something that you were feeling embarrassed for is today something that you are extremely passionate of yeah right Absolutely. and uh, so coming to that part uh, when you actually joined your family business which is now in arunachal pradesh Mm-hmm. uh and as you mentioned before that you know it's a tribal state the mindset is different you know uh as a woman as a woman entrepreneur as a as a uh, as an entrant to the business as a woman what challenges did you face were there any specific challenges that you found and how did you mitigate them how did you face them i think uh, so the first challenge that i had was uh within the immediate organization was uh i have a elder brother uh you know who's 3 years older to me and for so many years they all thought ki you know sharma ji ka business to karani aage you know le jayega beta hi sambhalega beta hi sambhalega the legacy is going to be the you know the sons um but that was i think it took me about a year so uh for people to like kind of be even comfortable in my presence <laughs> you know it, it took them a year uh but i have to give it to my father and my brother in this um scenario 
my father and brother have treated me as an equal you know they have never differentiated between a you know daughter and a son they have treated me with utmost respect and not only in terms of words but also in terms of actions and that has um, that has helped me grow in this because if i didn't have that support i don't know where i would be today so that is one part of it so that uh, you know uh, it, it, in terms of acceptance in the organization now i think the another challenge that i had was i grew up in a hostel like an international <clears throat> it was international school so we had people you know from all over the country coming in staying um, you know studying in that hostel so we did not speak much in hindi और आप अगर नॉर्थ ईस्ट का हिंदी सुनोगे तो आपको पता होगा कि हिंदी वहाँ की अच्छी नहीं है यू नो इट्स नॉट लाइक हाउ द नॉर्थ इंडियन स्पीक सो आई थिंक हिंदी टू बी ऑनेस्ट वाज नॉट समथिंग दैट केम वेरी इजीली टू मी एज अ फर्स्ट लैंग्वेज एंड इट वाज अ रियल चैलेंज फॉर मी टू एक्सप्लेन थिंग्स टू माई एम्प्लॉज एंड आई थिंक आई फाउंड अ वे अराउंड इट आई हैंडल्ड इट more intel- intelligently uh, as simple as an example i'll give you i said meri hindi shayad you know it might not be that good but what i can do is always give respect to that person so main jisko bhi tum ya tu bol you know whoever i say tum or tu to i will say everybody up be it like a 2 year old kid to like a 100 year old man main sabko aap bulaungi and i think with that um uh, a lot had changed people were listening so these are the little tweaks you know i had to make uh, to be accepted <clears throat> and uh, my dad gave me were, were there were there any instances within your business within your in the factory where uh, a person will just simply refuse to listen to you just because you are a woman so first of all so they uh, first of all first of all when they find out that i am a daughter and all they want to ask me more about like home stuff and acha beta you know like beta aap kya karte ho and then uske baad na they don't want to talk to me <laughs> but after like then they want to talk to my brother or my dad like i'll say the same thing but they'll not listen to me they'll listen to them so and i know it's not because of something that i like i lack you know but it's just how the how they think and um, i'm still beating it to, till today i don't think i will be able to say that i have done it you know but every day has been a new challenge and new challenge that why is this person not listening to me and how do i make this person listen and that is up to me that is my challenge so because i can't change anyone i have to change myself so how about a challenge with your father does your father listen to you in business <laughs> so initially it was a struggle right <laughs> like la- first two years was just like ye, you know ye young bacche aake unko lagta hai ki unka ye idea hai wo idea hai aur they don't understand ki 20 saal se aisa business chal raha hai you know so my dad always thinks that you know young people are very like energetic in terms of their opinions and suggestions and i would say that i was also till once or twice he told me and then i learned to keep quiet and observe so <clears throat> what happened was my dad would not listen so i had to find a way to make him listen right this i'm talking about the similar challenge that i just spoke about right now so my solution to that was that if i need to convince my dad of something i really need to do my homework and really need to do my research really need expert opinions so what i would do was i knew the guys in charge you know in his organization you know whose um uh, feedback is always very very important for us to take a business decision <clears throat> so i would come up with something i would call up all of these people and say this is what i think right this is Wonderful. what i think please tell me if i'm thinking the right thing and if my father will get convinced if i say this and 
only when i got approval from those 10 people which ranged from our marketing head to our operations head to our finance head to cas to lawyers to cs like you name it to tax you know tax advisors i spoke to everybody and then and then i would go to my dad okay and i would tell him i know you're gonna ask did you speak to this person i said i have already spoken to everyone and this is what wonderful wonderful and i would print out my entire research in short my dad doesn't like long stuff you know because he, he's he's a busy man busy man so he needs something in short and crisp and i would speak absolutely to the point and crisp um and then he would accept my you know my idea of change and okay so this was this was more about uh, convincing and you know uh, getting your uh, thoughts through to your dad yeah. and it was a it's a wonderful idea that you did uh, is actually influencing and learning from his core team of people yeah. around him uh, but at the same time how did you learn the tricks of trade uh, from your dad uh, was it through observation was it through discussions would it be that you would be sitting in his cabin or something how how did it happen so uh so when I started, my uh, my dad had made a routine for me, actually. And uh, his thing was that in the morning, 9 o'clock, you're supposed to go to the factory. Uh, 9 to 2 o'clock, you're supposed to sit in the factory and learn stuff. Don't think that you are a you will go there and say something to you. No, don't think of yourself as such a great human being. I would be like, okay. Uh, so what I started doing was, so my dad never came to the factory with me. I have to say this. Okay? My dad never handheld me through my learnings in this process. Um, I would go to the factory. I would speak to each and every one. Ki, achha, dikhao, aap kya karte ho? Aap kaise karte ho? Iska permission kaise laate ho? You know, isme kya problems aate? Kya problems nahi aate? So sir, first two years of my life i think this is what i did you know i don't think i was i was the businesswoman that you know i think i have learned a little bit of now but at that time sir i was nobody i did not know anything but how how is it to sit along with your dad in his cabin and listen to people so then what happened was the factory i this is what i did from 9 to 2 and then I reached home at 2.30. I had lunch with him. And at 3.30, I was supposed to go down to his office. Now, my dad had actually kept a sofa on the corner. And he said, whoever comes, you're not supposed to sit in any other seat. That's your seat. Go sit in that corner. Now, I, my dad meets around 30, 40 people uh, in a day. And this this varies from not only our liquor portfolio but from our power trading to our ferrosilicon industries to our liquor industries so i was getting a full view okay of um, how my dad actually handles so many things and how mm -hmm. does he talk to people that was the most important thing because in arunachal relationships is what you know uh, helps in business and I would only sit, listen, observe, extract information, try and apply it back in my business. And that, that is how I really learned the tips and tricks of this trade. Because it was not only, so I am into manufacturing, but the selling part, I was never, you know, he was into selling. And how do they sell? What do they think to sell? I learned through listening. So Meenakshi, uh, having learned the tricks of the trade, uh, you initially were have you your uh, origin, uh, the business model has always been third party manufacturing, which means you are manufacturing right. for uh, large companies like Diageo and others. Yeah. Uh, and now you are trying to transform your business and create your own brands. Would you like to say something about that? How how is it helping you? What things are helping you to build your own brands? And what are the challenges that you are facing? Um. So I, we had, we have a big manufacturing unit, but the capacity of which was very underutilized. And um, for me, the biggest um, problem was that 
why are we not utilizing what we have and uh, i think that's where you know i decided that uh, you know we should have another tie up with uh, you know say allied blenders to produce the officers choice blue so they took up some of the capacity now the remaining capacity that i had i i like to believe that i have a good sense of aesthetics you know like i i i think my strong part is branding and packaging and marketing and i wanted to develop a popular mass brand but with a packaging with the quality of a international you know level so i i wanted people in arunachal to experience that uh, a small example of it would be we all know how uh, russian vodka is very famous right and uh, what i did was i got myself a russian blender to make the vodka so that people realize that even though the price might be affordable we do not compromise on quality and that is the conditioning i think i wanted to do for my brand um and that that is what led to uh, you know us launching romaine vodka in two variants one was a premium vodka which is the plain vodka and one was the green apple vodka um and it has been accepted very well in the market um so so this is this is how you know my journey has been so i think uh, you you are still you know it's just the beginning of your journey and your career yeah. and you are doing so much for your family business mm-hmm. uh, you are yet unmarried right mm-hmm. and it's eventually you know a, a, the big turning point in a woman's life the first one is obviously finding a right life partner uh, you are based in arunachal pradesh what has be, what is being the discussion at your family with your father and mother for your marriage finding out the right kind of life partner for you ye sab itna mehnat kiya what if you were to move out into another geography of india how will you handle this does that question ever strike you and your family and how are you thinking about this i think it's a very valid question and i think that this question i had put up to my father rather than him putting it up on me because i was like you do know that i'm going to get married some day but you know my dad i think was in denial for the longest time and i had to remind him that i'm his daughter not his son <laughs> um but yes uh, so the discussion has gone i mean we have discussed about this and uh, i think so whoever is going to be my partner needs to understand uh me as a person and you know what is important to me and i think uh, men these days have also progressed a lot in that manner they do realize that you know if women are just not uh, meant for the kitchen they are they are out there at the man's table making the decisions so i think <clears throat> uh these days you know partners are very very accepting of uh the work that we do but it is up to us so how we manage it so how i you know how we have decided to manage it was making sure that we take advantage of the technology that is available today mukesh ambani has made such big decisions for his company and he does not need to travel to do that and we we all have been proof of that in the he has been proof of that in the last few months um so so businesses are managed these days because everything like in terms of what is happening in my factory right now i can see it with a click of a button i can hear it with a click of a button you know and having a strong team to support you is again very very important that does not change the fact that uh, you know i need to travel that is something that has to be accepted by my partner uh, and i'm sure uh, that it is something that i will find but my father has always said find a man who is simple and who is humble those are the only two qualities that you need to look for so according to you things are changing the mindsets are changing Absolutely. and you are very very confident that you'll be able to find the partner who supports you who understands what you are doing uh, a qu- very quick response from you uh, on the last question is when you look back okay mm-hmm. a job at pwc or a job at ritz carlton versus your involvement in your family business 
which one is better and why it has to be uh, you know my um, my work right now why because i don't think i would have earned the respect that i have today um you know at a job i just wouldn't be able to do that and i have been able to achieve that um uh, in a small way by working you know in our family business so it definitely is something and respect is how how has it how has it helped you to groom your personality your family business so confidence i'm like this fearless woman i don't think there's something they, i don't think there's if someone says you can't do this my mind works in the opposite way i think what i have become is fearless i'm not scared to fail i will fail if i have to fail but i will try it wonderful wonderful very very well said that you know uh, you what you've learned through your family business is being fearless is being confident and uh, this is precisely what we are trying to bring out through our uh, through our initiative at asian institute of family management business can we groom our daughters can we groom our daughter in law in our own family business it gives a 360 degree perspective and as minakshi mentioned that she realized that risk mitigation processes that she was trying to learn outside in a in a job was already on a platter in her family business and that has made her feel more confident so it's all about creating this kind of uh, grooming our daughters grooming our daughter in laws to have this kind of confidence in life so thank you so much minakshi for being with us uh, all the viewers so all the viewers who who believe in us who would like to contribute to with us please contact miss sujatha roy she can be reached on 9833967687 this is an event which goes live on facebook every sunday at 5 pm sharp and those of you who would like to go through our previous episodes please go to our youtube channel where all these episodes have been uploaded the name of the youtube channel is women in family business by aifmb so until then uh, see you next sunday same time with a different participant thank you so much thank you